Hello and welcome to the Spyro 3 Any% Percent tutorial. This tutorial will be for people who are just getting into Spyro 3 Any% Percent, as it is quite a hard game to get into. I'll be showing you the easy ways and also telling you about some things that you could improve on in the future to lower your time. I'm playing this on an emulator right now so you can see my controls in the bottom left hand corner. I also run on emulator because helmet proxy feels a lot easier than on console. To begin with, I'll be talking about the fastest way of playing this game. PS TV is the fastest way to run this game, followed by PS2 fast disk speed, then emulator, then PS3. The emulator I am using is DuckStation. Make sure your runs are valid. Make sure you have the little NTSCU in the corner where my mouse is. That verifies that you are running on the correct thing. Before we start, I'd like to say a couple of things about this game. Your first main priority is getting into the levels. Once you nail that, then you can start looking into getting fast in the levels. This normally requires a proxy or a squeeze. I will also be talking about which tricks are easy and which tricks you should go for as a beginner and which tricks you should go for when you're starting to get the hang of the game. The only requirement for any percent is getting to the end of each level. That excludes speedway levels and sparks levels. Right, let's get into it. So timing begins when first movement is possible. Right here, I'm just gonna jump, jump, gonna use the wall there, jump. Try and avoid bonking because it loses a lot of time. During text box, it's good to spam X and start to get through the text box. In Sunny Villa, there are two ways of completing it. Either you can run through the whole level without doing any proxies, or you can do a proxy. As a beginner, you should run through the whole level if you're not confident with doing proxies. However, I'll go through both ways. So we just run along here. We jump along here. Very basic. Here we jump past Zoe to avoid a cutscene with her, avoid talking to her. And when we go down these stairs, be careful, try and spam flame first because um, you might bonk into him. Thank you for so this is the first proxy you can go for. It's a kind of medium-ish skilled proxy. Uh, it took me quite a while to learn how to do it. But once you get the distance from flame and then the timing of the X, it becomes a lot easier and you might go for it. Sometimes you won't get it, but you have three chances in this level to get the proxy to skip that cutscene of the big chicken you saw. So I slowed down the footage so you guys can have a look how you do a proxy. So first of all, we charge and right here, I like to start my flame about two tiles before the Nork. Now you're going to do a short hop charge. That means you only press the X button for a short amount of time. You'll then let go of the X and then press X whilst you are in the hitbox of the Nork. Keep holding X and square and when you're at the right height, then you can spam X and stop holding the directional buttons. Now here it is at real speed. This was a very high proxy, which you can go through the roof. Uh, if you have shorter proxies, you can actually go somewhere else. So this pillar here to the left, if you just go through there, that doesn't have a hitbox. If you miss the first nork, you can also go for the second nork if it doesn't work out. Sometimes you get baby proxies like this, but that's a big time saver you can do anyway. Uh, here is the second nork proxy though. I like to go at it for an angle to get the high up. And that's Sunny Villa. Now we learn quite a hard trick. Uh, one out of the three tricks we can learn to get into seashell shores. This is waterfall proxy. We have to stand on this leaf here. Quite a lot of people have different setups for this. Uh, after this, we then have to do something where we skim the top of the waterfall to try and get Spyro to do his swim in air. Uh, I will show some people's um, setups for this. Because they're all kind of different. Everyone has a different setup, there's no correct one. So as we've done that, now we can go over here, we can swim down, this place doesn't have collision, go under, and then up over, there's a little portal hole that you just saw there, those two triangles, that's the portal. 
Uh, we've got this way where we run along here, we do a charge, we jump there, we go up. So this will be the easiest way to do it. We're gonna get zapped by Zoe just in case you die in the second part of this um, getting into seashell shores. This is probably one of the easiest ways of doing this. We're first going to collect the egg because if we go past the egg, it just automatic, we, we have to get this egg. It's an automatic thing. Grabbing this egg also affects the spike fight earlier on in the game. It will be on hard mode now. So it's something that you might not want to do and try and stick to bypass, which I'll be showing you last. Right, so Spyro has a height cap and we're going to try and break that now. We break that by holding the up button whilst pressing X, which you can see Spyro flapping. We do this a lot more when we get out here and it's going to break the height cap. We're going to aim for the top of that tree there and we're going to holler. Now that we've landed, we can just charge jump over to here. And now we're going to get a swim in air by going down under and charging. Now we go into seashell shores. We also have a third option of getting into all these levels. Uh, it's called, called Whirlwind into Bypass. It's one of the easiest tricks to do. It's very hard to learn. It took me quite a while to learn how to do it. Uh, and if I'm honest, I still mess up on it. I see the top players mess up on this trick as well, but it's worth learning. Uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Nitrovsky, who's going to teach you because I learned by watching this clip. So I'm gonna go with the uh, consistent setup here. That was a bad start. So you do as you normally would, but here I just don't hold any direction until I'm way out of the cave, right? So that means I'll be kind of low out of the cave. But it also means it gives me a lot of play a lot of a space to then do a really strong uh, flight double jump. And what I do for flight double jump is down and hold down the whole time. Down X square. With approximately that timing. Down X square. Down, X square. Thank you so much for that, Nitrovsky. Now, Seashell Shores. It's a very straightforward level. We just charge through it. Uh, there are some movements like there. We jumped over Zoe. We're going to jump onto this, jump straight in the camera, and we're going to go to the right-hand side of that so we avoid bonking on that barrel just then. So we're going to just carry on. Again, try and avoid the shells. They're very easy to bonk on. You just kind of jump around them. Uh, it's just basically getting some clean movement in this game. Uh, when we go through the wooden planks, we're gonna just aim for the octopus there, and we're just gonna go straight into the cutscene. So, the next level we get into is Molten Crater, and there's an extra way on how to get in Molten Crater. It involves a wall glide, which means gliding up against the wall, but you can't glide up against it for too long because you'll flop. Once we get on top of the portal, we can just charge straight onto the wall right there, and then the portal is directly under the actual portal that comes on top. So there it is, just there. We can also do a faster way of just doing it like that, but if you don't feel confident, you can just do it the first way. Take it nice and slow, you don't want to mess up. This is the second way of getting into Molten Crater. Uh, right here we have a wall grind kind of thing going on where the game kind of allows us to get up there. Uh, we are then going to do the Whirlwind Bypass because it's the easiest way of doing this. Uh, you can do the long way of gliding all the way over to the tree again, swimming into air. You can do all the ways. You can do waterfall into uh, Molten Crater as well. I would really suggest learning the wall glide as it saves quite a lot of time. Uh, now we're in Molten Crater and we're going to run the route just normally. Uh, you can avoid that guy by walking up against that wall there. I really hugged that wall there so I didn't get whipped. Uh, when you get whipped you, set, you um, lose some time there. We're going to avoid Zoe again by just jumping past her. And right here, I like to go for this little spot here where we can hover. It's a very small space that you can actually land and um, not fall into the lava there. And it saves quite a lot of time. And it also saves you from maybe bonking into the uh, ball. Now we have the second way of this level by doing ball proxy. 
So for ball proxy, we have to do something slightly different. We're not going to flame, we're going to charge into the boar instead. I like to start my short hop charge just as the lava pool is out of sight. That's when I press X and I only press it for a short amount of time. Then let go of both buttons. After this, you then press X square very fast. You hold the square button though and you will then charge up into the air. At the top of the height, you then spam X and you get into a glide and you just glide over to the Tiki Man over there. Once we come out of Molten Crater, we can do a cool little trick here where we can grind up against this wall and get on top of this ledge so then we can get into Cloud Spires. There's multiple ways of doing this. I did a kind of jump at the end, a glide at the end. We can just do a charge, straight charge, no jumping. Uh, no jumping out of that charge. Or we can do a spin jump. Uh, it's, this is a really good place to practice your spin jumps when you're new here. Uh, spin jumps are throughout this whole run. Uh, you should probably practice it. It's a nice height to practice off of as well. But um, yeah. Cloud Spires is actually quite an easy level to do. We've got two ways of doing it. The first way is very easy. We're going to do a kind of little hour bounds. We're going to jump on top of here. We're going to charge jump over here, hover, and we're gonna just glide behind the back, hug the wall as much as you can, and we enter a portal into a mini game. We're gonna quit out of that, and that's going to put us right where the end point of the game is. So I'm going to jump, and we're gonna hold, we're gonna go neutral when we're close to NPCs. Uh, neutral means you don't hold any buttons, uh, and then you can gain, you can talk to the NPCs faster. This trick is a little bit harder, but it's worth doing. For this, you're going to charge and then do a full hop, two separate things. We're going to charge straight off the edge there, right there in the center. As soon as you get to the edge, let go of all your buttons and then do a full hop. So you're gonna press A or X. The reason why we do this is because it can break the height cap so we can then get onto the higher ledge there. Then going to aim for the right side of the ledge there. We're going to do a little hover while then pressing up left to get onto the ledge. Now here it is in full speed. I'd say it's definitely worth going for as it saves about 15 seconds-ish but definitely worth going for. It's an easy trick once you get used to it. Now we are going into Sheila. I'm going to do the easiest way of doing the whirlwind bypass. Again, you can do the long uh, glide onto the tree or you can do waterfall into Sheila. For Sheila, I like to aim, I like to go a little bit up and I like to aim at the baskets there. Sheila is a very straightforward level. Uh, there's not much to do about it. It's just kind of movement. Uh, make sure you kill the Norks there. So um, yeah, it's very straightforward. The only bit I'll talk about is the mushrooms. Um, instead of doing a double jump on the mushrooms, uh, try and do just a single jump on the mushrooms because it saves a little bit of time. So here you can see I'll be doing single jumps into a head bash. Uh, I try to get the, the Norks first because they, they're kind of RNG in their pattern on when they walk. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to show here a double jump. You can see there it took a lot longer to do. Now we wait for the little goat there. And yeah, that's a very straightforward level. So now we're going to get automatically teleported to the balloon. If that doesn't happen for you, you might have done the levels in the wrong order. Uh, yeah, make sure you do the levels in the right order. So we begin with baiting Buzz to run along here. We do a little charge and jump into there. Um, that's the fastest way of doing Buzz. Uh, we are then going to do a camera trick where we're going to trick Buzz into stopping his... Um, attack animation basically his rolling so we just kind of we hold the l2 button whilst being at the corner you have to be at the corner you can't be um in the center because he can't kind of reach you there so we're just going to keep doing that by holding the left r l2 and then just stand by the corner and just wait until you stop hearing him make the noise of like the rolling around and then just charge into him Another thing to take note is to do this anti-clockwise. It's a tiny bit faster if you do it. Uh, don't ask me why, I just got told it is faster to do it anti-clockwise. 
Now, well done. You made it to midday garden. If I'm honest, that's a big achievement in itself. It's quite hard to get out of the first home world because the, I'd say the first home world is the hardest. So, first of all, we're going to try and get into Sergeant Bird. There are two ways of doing that. First way, the hard way, uh, bridge swim. To get under the bridge, we do a jump. And as we fall, we get a dip, so we're allowed to go under the bridge. If you fall out of the bridge again, or you somehow manage to get out, just do a jump to get under the bridge. You should also press triangle so you get the camera under the bridge with you too. Then hold up, and then do two full hops. Don't do three. If you do three, you'll come outside of the bridge. You always have to hold up, and Spyro is going to do this thing where he's kind of jumping. He's not jumping, he's flopping. Uh, you're also going to have a look at the water level at this point. I normally start my charge as soon as the water is going up. I start extra early because there is a little bit of lag on emulator. So if you're playing on console, remember that you might have to time your charge a little bit more different. Once you get into the water, then you're just going to hold charge. Don't aim too far down because you might hear death play. And we're going to go straight into Sergeant Bird, which is just under his cage in between the two vases. If you're struggling with bridge swim a lot, there is another way to do this, uh, getting into Sergeant Bird. It's a lot easier. And um, if you just wanna do runs, this is uh, an ideal way of doing it. This is how I started off. So we're gonna go up here and ideally you can talk to Zoe just in case you die. We're gonna do a spin jump here on top of here, if I can do it right. Um, normally it's good to go to the opposite direction of where you're standing, so diagonally. Uh, we're then going to charge through this rock, we're going to glide, and then we're going to do a head bash right here. Now you have to time your head bash right, because sometimes you may uh, go below it and just end up head bashing to death, or you could accidentally swim into uh, the water again. Uh, there's also this other trick here where your camera might get stuck. If this happens, Moving the camera buttons does nothing, just aim upwards. If you go back in inbounds, it's easier to go back out of bounds. You can just swim out. So just do that. Uh, don't, don't give up. Uh, sometimes the camera does that. It's weird. So now we come to Sergeant Bird movement, which is kind of hard. It gets a lot to get used to. You have to hold R1 and L1 at the same time and just use the directional buttons. I find uh, using left and right is faster and then changing your camera position to go whatever direction you want to go. Uh, it takes a lot of getting used to. Uh, as you can see there, going backwards and forwards is slightly slower, but left and right is very fast, so you just kind of change the direction. So, as soon as you start the level, you're going to flap up and you're gonna, you're gonna go right here. Uh, there are some enemies you have to kill. These ones I kill, uh, you do need to kill these ones. Uh, because they get in the way. Uh, if you do this super fast, you can then uh, kill these guys, which will help you uh, when you're collecting the things, because you don't want to collect the uh, weight there and get hit by the pot. Uh, in this room, I do like to go and hit the flying guy above there, because he can get you sometimes. Um, but I don't do it here. Um, See, the guy there is gone because I got him earlier. You don't have to get anyone in this room. It's just nice to get this. Uh, in this room, you don't have to kill anyone as well. You just have to be a little bit slow in this room so the bird can catch up. The only guy you have to kill is that one right there. That's it. That's the only guy you have to kill. Uh, that room beforehand, you do need to go a little bit slow to allow the bird to uh, catch up with you. And that's how you do it. There are other ways of doing this. If you get really fast, there are certain enemies you have to kill, but at the speed you're going, if you're starting out, it's easier to do that. Spooky Swamp is the next level we'll be going into. This is the fastest way of getting in there. We're going to glide over and hover onto this bridge. And then there's no collision with these trees. So we're just going to fly through them, do a sharp turn down. And I look for that gem for the portal there. If you're struggling with that, there is the other way you can do it, which was the beginning where we jump up here and we uh, get zapped by Zoe just in case we die. Um, she zaps us because we've already spoken to her. She can only speak to us once. Spin jump and then we're just going to charge off of this straight down there and the head bash right there. Uh, the portal for this is slightly a bit higher. So uh, normally you'd aim for the water. After the water, you aim up a little bit. Uh, because the portal is just there. 
for Spooky Swamp, there are two ways of doing this. We've got the beginner's one, which is what we're doing right here, where we climb. Uh, flame these guys, because they will hit you. Uh, the camera goes funny here, because it's concentrated on that uh, enemy there. Uh, it's good to flame this guy too, because he can hit you. Go off the side there, because the guy can hit you with a rocket. I come up here to get some extra height, just so uh, I don't fall to the piranhas. And then we just talk to the guy. Now, the other way of doing this is called Croxy, where we get a proxy off a croc. Croxy is always worth going for because you don't lose a lot of time going for it. Uh, this proxy requires charging into the enemy and then jumping onto the body instead of flaming. So we charge to the right side of this NPC and we're going to charge into it and just a split second, then we're going to do a jump. We then let go of the jump button and then press it again with the square and that allows us to do the proxy. Forget that the jump we do into the proxy, the first one, is a short hop. It is not a long hop. If you hold the square for too long, you will not get this proxy. If you get the proxy, there are multiple heights to get. This one was quite a large one. I could have flown over there. But I'm going to show you places you can stand on this hut because some places are, are not solid. Uh, so you can't stand here or here. Uh, this is the only sloped area that you can stand. Once you know that, then you we can fly over to the next area here. I always like to flame that little signpost there, just in case it catches you off guard, and you flame this guy to talk to the NPC. Uh, this is a higher proxy where we don't even touch the hut, we can just fly straight over there. Uh, well, you can also do croxy off of all the other crocs in the game. So when you um, go further on in the game, um, there is another proxy you can, you can do the proxy off of and you can reach here as well. So now we've done Spooky Swamp, we're now going to go into Bamboo Terrace. And how we do that is we get on top of the bridge again and we're gonna aim for that tree over there. So we're gonna run off this edge right there and we're going to go for that tree over there. So charge off there I like to be underneath this red gem and then I aim for the purple gem and then we're in. Again, if you don't feel comfortable doing the whole bridge thing, you can do the exact same thing of getting into the other ones where you charge, uh, you do a, a thing and then you swim in it and then you get in to the portal. For Bamboo Terrace, there are three ways of doing this level. I'm only going to talk about two because that's the easiest ones to do. This one is just a straightforward guide. You flame the moose and the guy and you look at the pandas. If you don't look at the pandas, they're, they're very lazy. They don't, they don't come to you. So now we're going to go over here and um, we're going to go into straight into the water and we're going to go into a spin jump. So you want to be a little bit further away and then start doing the spin jump. If you're too close, you'll bump onto it. It's good to flame that guy there because he might hit you. If you're not comfortable doing spin jumps, you can just kill all these enemies and just do it the intended way. Uh, where the pandas will then go to the cutscene and then the bridge is there. So then we charge around here, we can jump around there, that saves a little bit of time. Avoid the moose, jump, jump and then we've made it to the end of the level. Now, the second way of doing this is a squeeze proxy. Uh, we're gonna flame this guy, flame that guy again, and then we're gonna wait for the pandas. We're going to jump on top of the panda so we can try and get in quicker. So we're gonna jump and flop onto the panda so you let go of X. Then we're going to press X and hold up right whilst holding L2 and that will shoot us up, hopefully. When you're up, then hold R2 so then you can change your camera and have a look at where you're flying to. You're gonna aim for this mountain area. This whole area is solid, so don't be scared to uh, go wherever you want. The mountain in front of us is hollow, so we're gonna just charge straight through that and get to the other side. We're going to do the exact same thing. Um, instead, I, I went around this corner and then uh, to avoid the moose and then jump, jump. After this, the next level we will be going into is Enchanted Towers. Uh, an easy way of doing this is we're going to collect the fireball just here and we're going to do a spin jump. Now we're going to go for a wide glide around so we can aim for that and get into the level which saves time. Uh, be careful, you might hit the thing and then you'll have to like go all the way back up the stairs again. That's why I go for a wider glide than um, a kind of more in. 
Also, it's a bonus if you can get into the level instead of it opening. So, Enchanted Towers. Uh, I'm going to show you the long way of doing it. There's two ways. We're going to uh, run through this level here. Uh, it's always good to get those guys because they have a massive radius around them, so just flame them. Uh, don't worry about the drill guys, those guys are, are harmless. I'm gonna jump over here, and then we're gonna go up into this whirlwind. We're gonna glide over here, and we're going to flame these rockets to destroy the sorceress statue. Um, these stairs can be tricky. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I bonked a few times. Um, yeah, I always like to try and collect sheep if I can. Uh, I like to try and like to do it before the cutscene plays just in case I'm on a low sparks or I need extra health. Now, the other way of doing this level is by doing a squeeze proxy. Again, the second squeeze proxy we'll be seeing. We flame this guy at an angle so his dead body lands on top of us and squeezes the two hitboxes together. Aim for the corner and hold up. When you get to a height, then press X. We then do a charge jump over to this little area here, and then another charge jump with a hover. Don't forget to hover. Uh, we then do the exact same thing of blowing up the rockets. Uh, this time, I actually do a nice stairs. There's also this way of doing it. Personally, I've never got this, but it's always worth trying if you can't get either of the other ways. When I come out of Enchanted Towers, I like to aim for the bunnies because there is a high chance that you will get an extra life from charging into them. Um, it's always nice before going into IC Peak. If you're new to the game, IC Peak will cost you a lot of lives. First of all, I'm going to show you the easy way of doing this level. Uh, we have to shoot and break that ice wall over there. I like to charge against that wall there to avoid bonking, even though I bonked. Um, it's always good to aim for the uh, rocket guys because they might get you from behind. Here we're going to jump and charge over, flame the TNT. Uh, gonna just jump and charge. We want to try and avoid a lot less time on the ice because we cannot jump on the ice. We're going to stay close to the wall there because that guy has a massive hitbox and can hit you. Gonna shoot twice so that we can get through both ice walls. The duck is really nice there if, you're, if you've lost a Sparks. And then here we're going to just charge. We're going to flame the TNT to break the ice wall instead of using the cannon. And we're just going to charge up here. And then we're going to talk to Doug. <laughs> now the second way of doing this is called Icy Peak Jump. Where we're going to again blow up the ice. And we're going to do a quite hard jump. Where we're going to charge off this little ledge here. I like to aim um, my jump near the wall, grind it a tiny bit but not exactly into the wall. I time my jump right at the last minute so when he's coming off the ledge then I start my jump. I do a full hop into a glide. Now there are some issues. You might get a baby hop where your jump gets eaten. That's normal. Don't worry, it's not you, it's the game. The game does that sometimes. You'll jump off of edges and cliffs and Spyro will do a small jump when you've pushed for a big jump. Uh, for this jump, it is vital to have an amazing jump at the beginning and then an amazing hover. So you have to time your hover to be just a little bit before. I always do it slightly early. Always hold up because obviously you're going up, but um, I always do it a tiny little bit early. If you're missing it, it's it's either your hover or the way you're starting it. Doug will now bring us over to Spike, so we will now start the Spike fight. This Spike fight is actually the hard one because we collected that extra egg at the start of the game. I'll also show you what the easy one looks like. Um, yeah, you should go for the easy one. Try and learn um, Bypass because Hard Spike costs you a lot more time because he has a lot more hit points and he, he shoots a lot more. Fodder doesn't even spawn, so if you get hit, good luck. Uh, you got the, the bombs there and then you have the flames. I'm just going to show you what this looks like, fast forward it, and then we'll do show you what the easy one looks like because it's basically the same thing, uh, but extra hit points and you have to hit him, you just hit him more times, he's got more health. 
So now I'm going to show you the easy version of Spike, which is uh, which you should go for as well and try not to get that extra egg. So for this version of Spike, uh, we just need to hit him twice with each kind of phase. With these uh, molten ball thingies, uh, those are RNG, so they might spawn all the way across the other side of the map. For the flame part, if I'm honest, just look out for Sergeant Bird. Sergeant Bird will like drop it and you can see, as long as you kind of have a look at where he is, he'll um, he'll uh, drop it. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. And then the blue ones, just, just, just hit him like that. And that's very easy, it's super fast. A lot faster than doing it the hard way. You'll save a lot more time uh, doing it this way. And now we are heading to Evening Lake. Uh, well done for getting this far. Uh, we're nearly, we're nearly there. This is the last main kind of home world we're in now. If you're green sparks, I like to go grab a frog, but if you're blue, don't bother about it. Um, glide onto here, hover. I like to climb this wall diagonally because I feel like it's a little bit faster. Now, here's where the game might get a little bit different for you. So there are two versions of Spyro 3 on the NTSC. You've got version 1 and version 1.1. Now, I haven't really spoke about this because there's not much of a difference. The only difference is at this moment here where we glide into the wall and glide out of bounds. So in 1.1, the version which I'm running on, which is classed as the slowest version, it only loses a couple of seconds, uh, I'm going to go glide across the here and we're gonna reach this part of the mountain here. We're gonna hover so we just reach the barrier of the um, solid wall. As soon as you hit out of bounds, start spamming the X button so you start the glide. Hold the camera button and then hold left. If you get too close, quickly back it up because you can quickly, you can go in bounds if you accidentally do it. Try and aim high to underneath this egg and then you have to aim to that blue gem right there. And here is it at real speed. Again, um, the little vase, I like to try and be high up. You can accidentally go inbounds if you're too high, but if you're too below, you'll end up going into Honeyway Speedway. Also, if you mess up and go inbounds, don't worry, you can just do a backup thing where you go into Lost Fleet first. The order of the levels in this home world, it does not matter. If you're playing on version 1, you can see here that we enter the mountain in a different area. Uh, the barrier is much lower here. You can also charge down. You can charge down in my version as well, but um, I am a big baby and I think if you're starting off, you should probably do the way I do it because it's a lot easier. I'm going to watch this at real speed now. You can also see that you still need to be high up. You can see he accidentally clips the top there and you aim for the green gem just there. Now, Bentley. Bentley is your worst enemy, but here he's not your worst enemy. This, uh, this level is actually quite easy. It's basic movement. If you're low on sparks, you can hit that bunny that's just right there. Uh, we have to wait for Bartholomew to follow us. And then, um, then we just hit the snowball at the gong. Uh, like to, I like to walk a little bit forward here because it saves a little bit of time. Um, he can sometimes push you forward. Now, I have not learned the seal cycle yet. I haven't learned anything about it. I just hit the seals. Yeah, there is a cycle to this. You can get a fast cycle for it. If I'm honest, I'm not too sure how it works, but you're not going to be saving that much time. If you're just starting off, this, this level can be last on your to-do list to get fast at. Here, there are two ways to hit the gong. Uh, you can do it the normal way where you just do the snowball or you could do it this way where we jump up do kind of like a spin jump It saves a couple of seconds uh, If you're new, it's probably not worth going for uh, You should probably go for the other version, which I'm going to show you now here. We just hit the snowball and Yeah, we walk a little bit forward to save a little bit of time if you're low on health if you if you're low on lives You can push that block all the way and get an extra life it might be worth it uh, before you do zombie, which will be coming up soon. But here we just push the blocks. They kind of click into place to let you know when they're, they're at the place that they need to be. So as you saw there, it clicked. And then we're just going to talk to Bartholomew. Oh, good tip here. Jump right at the last minute. 
Bentley is very slow at jumping and he doesn't jump very far. It's always good to walk and jump right at the last frame. As soon as you come out of Bentley, you're gonna go straight into frozen altars. Here we're gonna spam the fairy and we're gonna charge. We're going to do the baby way first of if you don't know how to proxy, we're gonna melt the ice, quickly jump over the penguin. If you go too close to him, you'll uh, start talking. Also avoid the big guys. They have a massive hitbox. Charge up here, charge up here. You can ice this guy because he might hit you if you're just starting out and we're gonna charge jump over to here, hover. And we're gonna charge jump over to here and then hover. And this is basically the end of the level. You've just, you've just done it. It's very easy to do. And we're gonna talk to the best NPC of the game, Eugene. Thanks for helping out. Now, the other way of doing this is doing a mammoth proxy. Mammoth proxy is probably the easiest. So for Mammoth, we're going to stand here and he's going to charge at us. Just before he charges at us, we are going to charge at him. Now, we do a charge, and then after we do the charge, we wait a little bit after we've hit him, and then we do the jump onto him and then the X square. For this proxy, you can get multiple heights. As you saw, I jumped over the wall, which is, is good, but it's not the best. Uh, here is a larger one where we can get on top of this wall, which saves a lot more time. And that's probably like the medium one. And then we've got a higher one where we don't have to land on the wall. We can land straight past, but we need to do a quick turn. So turn, and then we can hit that one. You can get even higher and go on top of the roof where Eugene lives. Uh, now we've exited frozen altars and we're going to climb up here and we're gonna go into firework factory. Again, we're going to do the Outer Bounds if you're on version 1.1. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to hover over here. Hover. We're going to glide. And we're going to aim for the portal underneath here. So it's just right about underneath it. You would have to be really low to miss that one. It's a very hard one to miss. It's very easy getting into Firework Factory. Uh, Firework Factory is actually a very easy level, uh, not much to do, no fancy tricks, unless you're a top level player. Uh, for me, and for maybe you who's watching it, we, we just run past everything. Uh, here, if you're low on health, I like to go for the bugs. Those guys can hit you if you're not too careful. And yeah, we can't skip this cutscene. Uh, we will go into the cannon. Uh, when I go into the cannon, I like to hold square and then up left. So when I come out, I'm ready to charge and also be careful of bonking that wall. It's very easy to bonk. Here, I like to climb the staircase on the right side by just jumping and it all, it just triggers a cutscene that we can skip. And that's the end of the level. It's a very straightforward level to do. Nothing special in this one. So when you exit Firework Factory, you kind of met with a cutscene, but if you spam the pause button, it flashes. It, it does that on every version. We're now gonna go into Lost Fleet. A uh, quick thing about Lost Fleet, if you accidentally went inbounds to Lost Fleet, go into Charmed Ridge next. You have to do that because there's no other way of getting into Charmed Ridge. Right, here we aim for the cannon. We aim up. Sometimes you can accidentally shoot Crazy Ed. We're gonna hit as many fodder as we can because we're about to do something called Zombie Proxy. Charge up here, we're gonna jump, and we're gonna aim for the X. Now, there are two ways of uh, getting off here. We're going to go for the harder way where we aim for the ship. We hover just at the right time and then we're going to meet with Crazy Ed there. Uh, the other version of doing this is doing it an easier way. If you're, not, if you're feeling scared, you can just glide over to here and then just climb up there. Now we actually have to look at the egg. Sometimes you can skip it. Now, here comes the hard part. We're gonna have to pause on the frame that Spyro is dead and we're gonna exit out onto that. So we're gonna go up here, gonna wait. So right now, his tail is in the thing. I'm even gonna circle it with my mouse. His tail, look at his tail. Also, I like to look at this little bit here to know if he's got it right because it lines up perfectly with this, but his tail, his tail is in the green goop. So that means I can exit out of this level right now. So I'm just gonna do that, exit. Uh, if you're playing this on console, it will also vibrate to let you know if you're dead. So as soon as you come out, you're gonna go hold down 
and square, because that's going to bring you out. And you will know if you've zombied if you carry on swimming. And you see, you carry on swimming. We're going to come down, around. Try not to go back in bounds. It doesn't matter too much if you go back in bounds because you're still in zombie mode. Gonna come up, gonna come up there, and now we're into the next level. But I'm gonna go back. It's also nice if you actually learn how to pause buffer, which is just pause X, pause X, pause X. It's fast. You can do it frame by frame if you get really good at it. Okay, obviously that's not gonna work. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you what you should do if you're ever in the situation of like, oh no, it didn't work, so I'm gonna pretend I'm you. Gonna go up, we're gonna like be like, oh, did it work? Did it work? And this is what happens if you don't actually get zombie. You're like, oh no, I didn't get zombie. Now don't panic, don't fing reset the timer. You're gonna go straight back in there. You're low on sparks right now. You need at least one sparks to do this trick. So green sparks is fine. You can just go back in here and then do zombie proxy off of here. So we're gonna exit and we're gonna leave and we got zombie proxy. Um, if you die, if you like mess it up and you don't get it that time, uh, you can go back to full um, sparks. You need to do zombie to move on to the next part of the game. So you're gonna go up, go back down. Turn around. There are the other ways of doing this. I do it this way because I'm comfortable doing it this way. And then we're gonna go in there. Cool, right. We've now entered Charmed Ridge and we have to talk to this fairy. As soon as we do that, we're gonna kill ourselves. The reason why we do that is because we're in zombie mode and when you're in zombie mode, you can't do anything. Like you can't, sparks doesn't work if you can't go through abilities or stuff like that. We're gonna show you the easy way first. We're gonna just charge past all these enemies. We're gonna do a little out of bounds here where we glide just through that wall and we're gonna aim for over here. If you're in zombie mode, you won't be able to do this. When you run past here, the, the little barrier will not do anything for you. We're gonna charge jump over here, charge through this enemy, and then we're gonna do a head bash to get on top of this. Very easy to do. We're gonna then aim for the cat over there who's shutting the door. And then we're gonna charge jump again. You may trigger a cutscene with that. Hopefully you've aimed where you needed to glide and um, you should be fine. Then we're just gonna flame that guy because he's the end of the level. Now there is a faster way of doing this level. It's called cat proxy. Uh, for this proxy, we flame and then charge into it and then X square into it. Uh, you can do this in zombie mode because you don't need to go through any vortexes or portals or anything like that. Uh, you, at the end, you then flame the cat and that ends the level. So to start off cat proxy, I like to start it from this position. I wait until he throws a ball out and then I jump up onto the next level. I then walk towards the cat and then when I reach this little area here, I then flame. After I flame, I charge for a split second and then we jump. We do a short hop, we let go of X and then we press it again to do the proxy. Now you can fly over to the left or right side, but if you've gained enough height, just go for the right because it's quicker. If you've just made it a little bit, go for the left hand side. If you missed the first cat proxy, you can actually go for the second one and you can go for the third one as well, but the second one is more easier. So we're gonna just do here, and if you get a small little one, we can still make it and just glide on top of this wall here. Now, be careful when you glide on top of this wall because some of it is solid and some of it is not solid. So I'm just gonna show you all the solid, solid places right now. Uh, that little area here, the one I'm looking at here, this is not solid. You will go straight through there. You can recover it, uh, because you'll go where the little firebomb area is. This here, uh, try not to walk on it. It's very slippery. Try and aim for like the kind of flat surfaces. So if you do make it here, as you saw, I just fell. If you do make it all the way over here, do not go for the left-hand side because you will bonk. You will have to aim at the bushes. Uh, as you go for the bushes, uh, you're gonna turn left because then you're gonna hit a cat. If you go the other way, you'll just bonk on things. So see, we've hit the cat and we've hit this cat. So yeah, uh, get used to the wall because there's loads of places you can stand on and not stand on. 
So when we exit out, I like to hold both the camera buttons so it kind of sends a spiral. We're gonna hold up, we're just gonna charge, and now we're gonna go onto the rocket and we're going to go and fight Scorch. I'm gonna save here. Right, Bentley can either be your best friend or you want to murder him. This part is RNG based. Green rockets are worth the same as one red rocket, as you can see here. I got one green. Now the timing is key. As you can see, you need to get used to timing of things. Bentley can be slow with giving out his rockets. Also, oh wow, he's really nice to me. Another green rocket. How how nice is he? See, and the green rockets don't really lock on well. Thank you, Bentley, for the red rocket. I like to stand very close. Try and avoid the, the bombs there. These guys, either you can shoot them, you can combine them together to explode them, or you can jump over them. So, I'm going to show you some of the enemies. So, as you can see there. Normally those are the best things you want, is when he does the scatter bomb thingy. The fireballs. Let's see what else he gives us, what's this? Let's see if you can just jump. Jumping saves him, we can shoot him. This all affects his timing as well. Sometimes uh, the bullets will go past as well. I want to try and get, oh, uh, here we go, a sun guy. The sun guy can, again, be shot or you can just jump. I'd like to get a uh, big boy, yeah. Here we go, we got the big boy, Buzz. Buzz, you can shoot him or charge him. Better to shoot him. And then you just can kill this guy. See, sometimes you saw there the bullet goes through him. It's, uh, it's not nice. Again, we got another Buzz. So you got two RNGs, you got the, the rockets, and you've got Scorch's fight pattern. If he keeps putting out um, the bomb guys or the fireball, the fireball is the longest waiting time. Uh, Buzz is still a long waiting time. Well done, you've made it to Midnight Mountain. Now we're going to do the hardest part of the game. I like to run along here, try and aim for the edges, it's quicker, and I'm also going to go for this little gecko here for extra life. It's always good to go into the sorceress with a yellow sparks. Another thing that I have to mention is that helmet proxy is easier on emulator, and the setup I'm showing you kinda only works on emulator. Uh, it's a little bit more harder on console. I'm gonna hand it over to few past me. <laughs> I like to position myself up along this thing. So you see here as the crystal is lined up with the helmet here. Um, I like to make sure that Spyro is touching the helmet. As you can see, he's touching it with his foot. Um, some people, I've noticed what they do is they kind of walk into the helmet just to get a little bit, you know, of the lineup properly. I like to press square, tap it. Do not press square, tap square. Literally for half a sec, not even half a second, just tap it. Just put your finger on it, take it off quickly. You're going to hold up, right, and L2 at the same time. So tap square, up, right, L2. And we're going to see if it works. Cool. So as you can see, I went backwards. That's what we wanted to happen. Uh, this is my lineup for it. So now we're going to incorporate the whole rotation. So we're going to go from up, right, to down, to left, to up. Um, while still holding the camera button. Cool. So as we can see there, when you get to the top of the thing, spam X for a glide. There is a dead zone around about here. Um, if you like fall in this area, Spyro will like not do any of the controls. He just becomes like that. There's certain heights to helmet proxy as well. You can get really high ones. Um, another thing I like to do is, uh, I like to leave it late when I start my rotation. I feel like that really helps a lot. Helps me get up. Helps me do this one. There's certain ways of doing it. You got that one, which is the nice one. If you start too early, as you can see, it does that. I want to do a nice late one. See, that one works again.
There we go. If you feel unconfident where um, Sorceress is, you can just go in any any cove and make sure that you hit the right one. I know this is the Sorceress one because it kind of goes drops down like that. And all I have to do is press X. That is the hitbox right there. Sorceress, getting into Sorceress. Um, it is good to learn where things are. That's a very good idea. As you can see here, it's slightly more flatter. Uh, we're gonna turn slowly and we're gonna get here. As you can see, it's more curved. This is the Sorceress little part here. This is the Sorceress up here in this hitbox there. But yeah, uh, there's different heights as well for Helmet Proxy. Um, again, I like to start my timing after the bump. Uh, it just works for me. People have different ways of doing this. Oh, if this happens, you can come up here. You have to learn the different ways. Oh, what? Or you can just come up here. You can make it here. See? You can do that too. Well, you're good to go. So, now I'm gonna learn the platforming part. So, let's just say you land up here. Um, oh, be careful now. So, um, if, you're, if your helmet proxies are barely making up, this is a place you can stand. Uh, you can't stand on this little piece here. You can stand here, you can stand over here. Now, I like to do this way. Apparently, this is the easiest way. There's another way where you go around the place. I go for this, where I hold up, jump, square. Okay, let's try that again. I, uh, do this. Hold up, square, X, and I turn around, and then I do this. And then I come all the way around here, then I come here, and then I come up here. So now we've entered the last part of the game. Uh, the sorceress has three attacks. She has her scatter thingy, she has fireball, and she can run at us and hit her with, with her staff. Now, there is a way on how you can uh, know what's going to happen in this fight. Um, I will link to Jeremy Thompson's video if you want to know exactly how to do this, where you can just do tanks and not UFO. Um, I like to look at the, uh, the, the cannons up there to know which one is dropping, so I think it's some over here. So I think the monkey's going to drop one over here, and I just did. Um, I like to wait if you want to be super safe. Wait until she starts firing. She's going to fire. Get off of that. Again, she's going to fire. She's going to hit me. Just jump on top of that. Um, I like to be slow when hitting because, if I'm honest, I don't really know what, where she's going. Uh, try and not get hit. If you get hit, that will trigger the monkey to uh, spawn a sparks and use up one of his time and bullets on on a fodder than anything else. You don't want that. Oh, we're just gonna go on this bad boy. I like to aim a little bit more forward, even though I didn't hear. Sometimes she does that. Terrible at this. Terrible. Literally terrible. Avoid getting hit. Keep looking, use your camera buttons to look for when the next drop is about to happen. As you can see, it's a UFO. Get on top of the UFO. If she's already hitting, then uh, get... I like to do this slow turning thing where I uh, turn slowly and then shoot. You kind of get a feel for the type of things you're doing. For the UFO, just use the directional buttons. Don't use up and down because then it just gets really hard. Be careful with this. I like to do this. It's nice. Safe. Don't be scared of doing that. When she's about to hit you like that, just go for it. Uh, if she's not hitting you, if she's not doing a spell. Timing ends on the last hit there when the health bar moves. Uh, so it's basically when you hit her, that's the last 
that's the split, that's GG. But yeah, GG. If, you, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been actually very hard to make. Uh, think about Spyro 3 if you would like to run this. It is a hard game to learn, uh, but it is very rewarding when you actually get a decent time when you hit proxies. But yeah, thank you. Please like and subscribe the video. This took me ages to make. And yeah, I will see you in the next video where I make more tutorials for Spyro. I hope you are. I hope you do good. I believe in you. Remember, it's a hard game. It's not easy.